Hi students, welcome to Smart Locus. In this video, we will see the chapter Morphology of Flowering Plants. Morphology means external, external features of plant. First about root. Root um, is fundamentally of three types. That is tap root system, fibrous root system and adventitious root system. These are the three types. Tap root system, fibrous root system. In both of these cases, the primary root is formed from radical of the embryo. Whereas in adventitious root, it is not formed from radical of the embryo. Then, tap root. What is tap root or what is tap root system? Here, a primary main root that formed from radical and its branches lateral roots primary secondary tertiary roots that is primary main root then its branches constitute tap root system this is commonly seen in dicots then fibrous root system this is seen in monocot actually here a primary root is there that is the root which is formed from radical but it is short lived it's soon replaced by cluster of thin roots arises from base of the stem. Then, adventitious root. It develops from parts other than radical. That means maybe from uh, branches or from main stem. Then, functions of root system. Absorption, synthesis, storage and anchorage. Absorption of water and minerals. Synthesis of PGR, plant growth regulators. Storage of food materials. Then it provides anchorage to the whole plant parts. Then, regions of a typical root. Different regions starting from the tip are root cap that is in at the tip. It is a thimble like structure that is a protective structure seen at the apex. Then a few millimeter above root cap is the meristematic region that consists of actively dividing meristematic cells which are thin walled and with a dense protoplasm. And cells proximal to this region are in elongation zone. That means they are responsible for growth in length. Growth in length. That means increases the length of the root. Then, these cells gradually differentiate and becomes mature. That means the cells proximal to this region are in maturation phase or maturation zone. And from this zone, epidermal hairs arises. These are known as root hairs. These root hairs are meant for absorption, root modifications. Tap root is modified for food storage in turnip and carrot. Adventitious root modified for food storage, sweet potato. Prop root that arises from aerial branches grow downwards and provide mechanical support seen in bunny and tree. Still to root that arises from the main stem, from lower node on the main stem, grow downwards and provides mechanical support. It is seen in maize and sugarcane. Then nematophore, nematophore seen in mangroves, example rhizophora. These are actually negatively geotropic root. They grow upward. They are meant for respiration, respiratory root. Actually, this is an adaptation seen in mangroves to live in marshy soil, saline soil. One more adaptation is seen in mangroves, that is viviparous germination. Stem. The main function of the stem is spreading out branches bearing leaves, flowers, fruits, etc. And it is involved in conduction of water, minerals. Provides mechanical support. Then, Stem has nodes and inner nodes. What is node? Is the region on the stem from where leaves arises. Inner node is the portion between two nodes. Stem has 
buds also both terminal bud and axillary bud this axillary bud develops to form either branches or flowers stem is modified to carry out various functions let's see the example in potato ginger zamingan colocasia turmeric in this case this underground stem is modified for two purposes for food storage and to act as organ of perination that is to tide over unfavorable conditions for growth then in watermelon pumpkin cucumber and grape vines stem tendrils are seen that is axillary bud is modified to provide mechanical support climbing then stem thorns are seen in citrus and bougainvillea in this cases axillary bud becomes a sharp pointed a woody structure that is for defense then a uh, stem of arid regions are modified uh, for performing photosynthesis they are with the chlorophyll example apensia and euphorbia in apensia flattened stem is present in euphorbia cylindrical stem is present stem modified for vegetative propagation in grasses and strawberry in these two cases underground stem grows to new niche and form new plants when the older ones die this type of modification can be termed as runoff in mint and jasmine stem is modified for vegetative propagation here a slender lateral branch grows ideally for some distance then arch downwards to touch the soil and form new plants this type of modification can be termed as stolon and then in pistia icornia modification offsets that is here a short and thick internode and from node rosette of leaves and tuft of roots arises then banana chrysanthemum pineapple sucker modification sucker here the modification arises from underground portion underground part of the main stem then grows beneath the soil horizontally then turn upwards and form new plants next about leaf leaf is a lateral flattened structure born exogenously at the node then it originates from leaf originates from shoot apical meristem it is arranged in acropetal manner what is the meaning acro means tip petal means towards so growth towards tip that is start from the base younger leaves are seen towards the tip a typical leaf has three parts that is there is a leaf base and there is a petiole and a lamina leaf base is the part which is seen towards the node on the stem and this leaf base can be uh, pulvinous that is solar leaf base pulvinous leaf base seen in is characteristic of fabaceae pea plant then a sheathed leaf base can be seen in monocots petiole petiole is nothing but uh, the part which holds lamina or otherwise we can say that it is the stalk of the leaf the long thin flexible petioles allows leaf blades or leaf lamina to flutter in the wind which cools a leaf and brings fresh air to leaf surfaces the next about leaf lamina also known as leaf blade it is the uh, green expanded part of the leaf this leaf lamina has veins veinlets this veins and veinlets are nothing but channels for the transport of uh, water and minerals and the main vein is known as midrib shape margin apex of this lamina varies in different uh, leaves that is leaves of different plants venation arrangement of veins on lamina the two types of venation are reticulate venation and parallel venation reticulate network veins are branched to form a network seen in dicot here veins are parallel to each other seen in monocot then types of leaves based on 
whether the incisions touch the midrib or not. Leaves are of two types, that is, simple leaf and compound leaf. That is, if the incisions do not touch the midrib, then it is known as simple leaf. Compound leaf means incisions touch the midrib. Or otherwise we can say that in simple leaf, there will be only one lamina. Because lamina will not be divided. Typical example, mango leaf. Then compound leaf. There will be many lamina. Because incisions touch the midrib and lamina will be divided into many. Then, this compound leaves are further categorized into two. Pinnately compound leaf and palmately compound leaf. Pinnately compound leaf, there will be a main axis that is known as ratchets. And this ratchets represent nothing but midrib. Axillary bud is seen at the axil of leaf only, not in the axil of leaflets. Pinnately compound leaf, example, neem leaf. Palmately compound leaf, leaflets arises from a common point at the tip of the petiole. Example, silk cotton thread, phyllotaxin. Arrangement of leaves on stem is known as phyllotaxin. If it is only one leaf, single leaf at a node, arranged alternately, it is known as alternate phyllotaxin. If two leaves at a node, arranged opposite to each other, it is opposite phyllotaxin. If more than two leaves at a node, arranged in a world, that is circular manner. It is known as world phyllotaxy. So three types of phyllotaxy. Alternate, opposite and world. Alternate phyllotaxy example. China rose, mustard, sunflower. Opposite phyllotaxy example. Calotropis and guava. World phyllotaxy example. Alstonia. Next about leaf. Modifications. Leaf tendrils for climbing. Seen in pea plant. Then leaf spines. For defense, seen in cactus plant. Fleshy leaves for food storage, seen in onion and garlic. Then petioles expand to perform photosynthesis in Australian acacia. Because in this case, lamina is short-lived, small and short-lived. And this modification is known as fill load. Then, um, insectivorous plants like pitcher plant, venus flytrap, the leaves are actually modified leaves. That is modified to capture insect in fluorescence. That is the arrangement of flowers on floral axis. That is termed as in fluorescence. Flower is nothing but a modified shoot. That is a shoot typical meristem. Changes to floral meristem during the formation of a flower. Then when a shoot tip transforms into a flower, it is always solitary. Then, based on whether the apex terminates in flower or not, or it gets converted into flower or not, inflorescence is of two types, that is racemose and cymose. In racemose inflorescence, apex continues to grow, does not terminate in flower. Cymose, apex terminates in flower. That is the difference. Then, in racemose inflorescence, flowers are arranged in acropetal manner. Acropetal manner means growth towards tip. That is, younger flowers are seen towards the tip. It starts from the base. Cymose inflorescence, basipetal arrangement is seen. That is, growth towards the base. Younger flowers are seen towards the base. Examples, racemose inflorescence in our syllabus, plant family, Fabesia is given. Cymose inflorescence, Solanaceae. The next about flower. Flower is nothing but the reproductive unit of the plant. Then a typical flower has four worlds. Two outer worlds, two inner worlds. Calyx, corolla, andrisium, ganesium. And on this calyx and corolla are collectively termed as accessory organs or non-essential worlds. Andrisium and gynesium termed as essential organs or reproductive organs. Then, the stalk of flower is known as pedicel. The solar end of the pedicel 
that is known as thalamus or receptacle then uh, in some flowers like lily calyx and corolla is not differentiated undifferentiated calyx and corolla is known as perianth unisexual means having only one sex organ either androecium or gynoecium bisexual means having both androecium and gynoecium symmetry actinomorphic symmetry is nothing but radial symmetry that is flowers can be divided into two equal halves by any plane example chili mustard datura in our syllabus the two plant families that is liliaceae uh, then solanaceae shows actinomorphic symmetry then zygomorphic nothing but bilateral flower can be divided into two equal halves by single plane passing through the center example pea bean cassia gulmohar in our syllabus a family fabaceae is given as an example for zygomorphic symmetry then asymmetric flower asymmetric means it cannot be divided into two equal halves canna is a typical example canna then trimeres if the floral appendages are three or its multiples of three then it is known as trimeres flower seen in monocots then tetrameres four pentamerous five these two conditions are seen in usually seen in dicots then bract bract is nothing but a reduced leaf seen at the base of pedicel flower with the bract known as bracteate without the bract a bracteate in our syllabus the plant family liliaceae example for bracteate based on the position of calyx corolla and rhizium in respect of ovary on thalamus flowers are categorized into three that is hypogynous flower perigynous flower and epigynous flower hypogynous hypo means below gynous means ovary so below the ovary what below the ovary other words arises that is calyx corolla and androecium arises from below the ovary that means ovary is superior example for hypogynous flower china rose mustard brinjal then perigynous perigynous peri means around so other three words calyx corolla androecium arises from around the ovary so ovary is either half inferior or half superior example rose plum peach these three are the examples then uh, epigynous epi means above calyx corolla androecium arises from above the ovary ovary is inferior example cucumber guava ray florets of sunflower next about parts of a flower the outer worlds calyx consists of sepals if sepals are fused gamosepalous if sepals are free from each other polysepalous corolla the brightly colored part consists of petals if petals are fused gamopetalous petals are free from each other polypetalous and the color and shape of this corolla vary greatly in plants shape can be either tubular bell shaped funnel shaped or wheel shaped estivation the mode of arrangement of sepals or petals in a flower bud with respect to other members of the same bud is known as estivation the different types of estivations are valvate estivation here uh, the members the sepals or petals are arranged without overlapping typical example calotropis then twisted estivation complete overlapping complete regular overlapping is seen in twisted estivation example china rose cotton lady's finger imbricate estivation irregular overlapping that is overlapping not in any particular direction example cassia gulmohar maxillary estivation characteristic of papilionaceous corolla here a posterior largest petal known as standard petal the two lateral petals known as wing petals the two anterior small petals known as keel petals 
so standard petal wing petal keel petal this can be also termed as vexillum ale carina then next about andrician essential words first about andrician a typical angiosperm anther is bilobed dithecus tetrasporangiate it has two lobes two theca in each lobe then tetra four microsporangia then staminode sterile stamen is termed as staminode epipetalous stamen is an example for epipetalous and epiphyllous condition example for adhesion that is attraction between dissimilar molecules here epipetalous means stamen on petal of the corolla seen in solanaceae prince epiphyllous stamen on tepal of perianth seen in liliaceae lily family then polyandra stamens are free from each other if stamens are united that means they are found in bundles it is termed as adelphi here in adelphi filaments are fused but anthers are free if a stamens are found in single bundle it is known as monadelphous example china rose two bundles diadelphous example p more than two mini bundles polyadelphous example citrus then variation in the length of filament of stamen can be seen in flowers of different families for example in salvia salvia total four stamens are there that is represented as a2 plus 2 that is known as didynamous stamen didynamous condition whereas in mustard brassicaceae a2 plus 4 that is known as tetradynamous stamen gynoecium that is the female reproductive world gynoecium consists of carpels it's made up of carpels each carpel has three parts stigma style ovary then the carpels can be either fused or free from each other if many carpels are there then they are fused also then it is termed as syncarpels example tomato mustard the two families given in our syllabus solanaceae and liliaceae are examples for syncarpels then apocarpels is more than one carpels are there and they are free from each other two example lotus and rose if only one carpel is present then it is termed as monocarpillary placentation the arrangement of ovules on placenta that is a cushion like structure of the ovary is known as placentation first marginal placentation here placenta forms a ridge a narrow band along the ventral suture joining of the ovary ovules are arranged in two rows p family so typical example axial placentation placenta is axial and ovules are arranged in a multilocular ovary example china rose lemon tomato then parietal placentation ovules are arranged on the inner wall of the ovary or on the peripheral part then example argimon mustard here ovary is initially single chambered but it becomes two chambered due to the formation of a false septum known as replum free central placentation wheels are arranged along the central axis no septa are present example dianthus and primrose then basal placentation placenta is basal is found at the base of the ovary single ovule is present in this type of placentation example sunflower and marigold fruit fruit is nothing but mature ovary or ripened ovary then fruit wall is technically termed as pericarp and fruit wall that is pericarp can be either dry or fleshy if it is fleshy and thick it will have three layers outer epicarp middle mesocarp inner endocarp then um parthenocarpic fruit partheno means virgin carp means fruit so virgin fruit fruit which is developed from the from unfertilized ovary parthenocarpic fruits are usually seedless typical example banana then drupe is a type of fruit seen in mango and coconut it is a fruit which develops from monocarpellary superior ovary and are one seeded then the difference in coconut a mesocarpus fibrous 
Whereas in mango, that mesocarpus flushing. The next about seed. Nothing but ripened ovule. In the structure, seed has two parts. Seed cord and embryo. Then embryo has embryonal axis. That is radical plumule. And cotyledons. Single cotyledon in monocot, two cotyledon in dicot. Then dicot seed. It has tester and tegmen. The outer seed cot, tester, inner layer, tegmen. Hilum is the point of attachment of the developing seeds on the fruit. Above hilum, there is a small pore, the small opening. That is known as micropyle. Then Two cotyledons are there in dicot. The cotyledons are often fleshy and has reserve fruits. Then dicot seeds are usually non-endospermous. That is, endosperm is not present in mature seed. It is fully consumed during embryonic development. Castor is an exception. Castor is a dicot with endospermous seed. Monocot seed. Monocot seed has single cotyledon. Here monocot seed explanation is given. With an example that is maize. In maize, a fruit wall and seed coat are fused. Seed coat is membranous here. So whether the maize grain is technically a fruit or seed. Actually it is technically, botanically considered as maize grain is considered as a fruit. That is caryopsis. Then the single shield shaped cotyledon is known as cutellum. A neuron layer is a layer of the endosperm that separates endosperm from embryo. So remember, a neuron layer is triploid. Then it has embryonal axis which has plumule and radical. Plumule is covered by collier child, radical is covered by collier rhiza. Then monocot seeds are usually endospermous. That means endosperm is present in mature seed. Next about taxonomic description of a flower. That is mainly focusing on flower formula and flower diagram. Flower formula. It's a method of representing floral features by using letters, numbers, symbols and all. And uh, two major features that is estivation and placentation cannot be explained or expressed, represented in floral formula. That can also be included in floral diagram. And example. Typical example is given that is um, floral formula of Brassicaceae, symmetry actinomorphic, then sexuality bisexual, calyx denoted by the letter K, 2 plus 2, 2 outer, 2 inner sepals, then corona 4, polypetalus, A, 2 plus 4, tetradynamous, A for androecium, G, gynecium, bicarpillary, syncarpus, superior ovary. Then the detailed description. Of the other three families, that is Fabaceae, Solanaceae, and Liliaceae, is given in a separate video. If you are not yet subscribed, please subscribe by pressing the subscribe button below. If you think this video is useful for neat preparing students, please share it. Thanks for watching.